Introduction to Web Programming, JSON and AJAX. So, JavaScript Object Notation, JSON. Data needs to be transferred between diverse systems, so you are saving data to your database, you are saving data to hard drive, you are getting data from other systems, you are providing your own data to some other systems, um, and you can communicate between your own server and your browsers. There needs to be a standard way of conveying information so that it can be processed in both ends and that the processing needs to be done with the code, no manual processing, but automatically. So it needs to be machine readable. There are several standards, for example, XML and JSON. So this JSON is often used when data is processed with JavaScript. They work very well together, at least <laughs> much better than with Java, which is not not the right tool to read JSON, although it is of course possible, but with JavaScript it is very fast to read and manipulate JSON. So what's the difference between JSON and XML? So JSON can be a bit shorter, more readable, but it's basically a matter of reference. But it seems that nowadays we are using much more JSON than XML. So here is the same data presented in JSON and in XML. Definitely the same. They are identical, but the syntax is different. I prefer JSON, it's much more readable. So essentially it's key value pairs, can include arrays and nested structures as seen in the previous slides. And this JSON can be transferred over the network between servers or stored to database or it will any third party services. It's basically just plain text and it can be easily parsed with JavaScript, that's the key here. So we have this kind of a short JSON uh, string there, and JavaScript has functions to handle JSON. If it's just string that it's getting, then you can use this JSON parse to generate JSON object from that string. Query easily thing on, otherwise if you need to provide this JSON as a string to some other service, then you can just JSON stringify to generate string from JavaScript object. So this is JSON is an object, so you can create a string from that object and JSON string can be modified to object. And let's have an example on this. So here we have a just simple uh, JSON object. So this is JavaScript object and it's storing data. Attributes, name, age, school and courses. And this, these are strings. This is integer and this course is an, is an array. So what can we do first? Let's just log that demo JSON and let's see. Yeah, it's an object. Then we can modify it string json equals json stringify demo json and let's log that and now we have the object here in the first but the second printout is just string and if we want we can get json object out of that string through this JSON parse method like that. String JSON JSON is not an object. Yes, we have uppercase letter when it should have been not. So first we have a JSON object notation and then we have a string and once we parse it back to object then we have the object. So this is how JSON is working in its simplest form and we can use this stringify and parse methods to mo modify it back and forth. Then we are talking about asynchronous JavaScript and XML which is called AJAX and in the old days 
1990s and 2000s, the first decade, showing a web page used to require always a page load. So when you went to the web page, it loaded HTML, CSS and images from the server. And when you went to the second web page, it loaded that. If you did some modification, let's say, write a text to the input field and then it was sent to the server, once again the page was reloaded. But this Ajax asynchronous JavaScript technique is, makes possible to transfer more data without reloading the page. For example, if you are doing a Google search, you are writing something in the search input field, then it's giving you suggestions, but the page is not uh, reloaded. It's doing the fetching the data from the server background without reloading the page. Similarly, if you are scrolling Google Maps or Google Docs, there are no reloads, but the data is fetched from the background, from the server side. And nowadays, of course, Ajax is supported in all modern browsers. It has been the case 50 years, so that's not an issue. But there might be people that want to disable their, their, their JavaScript, so then anything done with JavaScript won't work. Then you might give a message that please enable your JavaScript. But let's see this Ajax architecture. So in, in the old days, we had the web browser, which has a user interface, then we had the server, and there was a server software, and there might be a database, for example, in the server. And the browser made a HTTP request and then the server parsed something and provided it back to the browser. So browser got HTML plus CSS as a data. And that was then user could see that, okay, I got this new HTML page. And in the Ajax model, we have a web browser. There is a user interface. And of course there is the server also. But what happens is that there is an XML HTTP request object. This is the old name of the thing how you could get data from the server. So the user of interfaces is just making JavaScript call that is then taking, making HTTP request, which returns, for example, JSON data, which is then parsed to the user interface. And the user doesn't see that there is any page reload, but in the background, new data is fetched from the server. Uh, in practice, the name might lead you wrong the content doesn't have to be in XML. So we could be speaking AJ is if we are getting JSON from the background. So JSON is more popular than XML, So, <clears throat> but the keyword is still Ajax, although we are getting JSON. And this XML HTTP request is the magic behind Ajax, but nowadays you don't need to write that. That object you can, for example, use jQuery, Axios, SuperAgent, etc. Those libraries that ease you the process of getting data. Or then just this vanilla JS, which has this fetch API, which is the thing that we are using nowadays. So it's pretty easy to see that we are fetching some data from some API. And then we are working with the response, which is a promise. So this is how we use the promises. Uh, fetching data that is provided us in the promise, then we parse it to the JSON format and then we can do something with the data. So let's uh, get an example on this. Okay, let's continue. Now we have this uh, simple uh, HTML file, only one button, get users, and then there are two tables, users and posts. So let's try to fetch some data to these tables. And I have just got those elements to those variables and now we can just start building our application. So let's add event listener to this uh, get users button. We are calling get users uh, function and now we don't need to use the arrow uh, function method because we are just giving the name of the function. We are not giving any parameters there. So we have a function get users. Let's put S there because we are getting plenty of those users. And I have this uh, API endpoint. Let's see. It is this kind of a JSON API. This is just uh, fake data from this 
JSON placeholder web page and there is guide how to use this this uh, examples uses this 10 method with promises but I think I will use the await async method so first of all we have the URL this one we are getting users from this URL so let's first have user promise and it's this fetch URL like this and this is not working now because we need to use this await here so first wait a bit to get actual content from this URL to the, there and now of course we are using await we should also use a sync here now it's working and this is providing us the uh, promise to this user data and then we are just parsing that the user json and once again we need to wait we are using this user promise json to json format and we could use check that what what are we getting now we should have a table here user json let's see users from yeah let's have a users promise and yes we got 10 users so let's then just loop through them and we can use the arrow function format we get one user there and then we are doing something with that user so let's put this user to the, the table there are plenty of data available there is address uh, object inside this uh, user object similarly there is company email id name form username website i think we are fine if we use name and email for example so let's first have the table row create element gr and then we are going to need two table data cells like this and there is a one and two and now the first one is going to have the let's put the user name there and then we can add to the second we can add user email like that but we would like to have also in this first cell that if we are clicking this cell so we are clicking the username then we are calling another another function and giving it a parameter so we need to use this arrow function format get posts and we are giving this user id as a parameter like that and then we can just add these table cells to that row and in the end add this 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 row to the table itself let's see if it's working yes we got the data to our table so now there are name and email in the table now we are clicking this first name it's i uh, know this full name name we don't have this get post function yet so let's build it and it's pretty much the same as this get users so we can just modify it yeah we are getting this user id so let's have the user ID, id as a parameter now the idea is that we are using this user id to in this url so let's call this users slash user id slash posts 
So now we are getting all, all the posts from that endpoint. And this should be posts. Like this. And then we are parsing through this post JSON and we are getting a one post out of that. And we are once again creating a two table cells. Now we are not putting any event listener there and we are not using user but post and it has a title body and then we are just adding those values there. Let's see if it's, it's working. So get user and now we are getting those users post. So there is this post title and then the post content in this table of hours so it's working and every time we press this some name we are getting more stuff into this array so uh, no not array but table so we have in this first no we are putting it to the wrong table so we are not putting them users but post post of course so let's let's do it again so get users and now we are getting the stuff to the right table so this posts is getting 10 new posts every time we are fetching for some some users posts uh, so this is how we use uh, fetch which is very important in in javascript we are using some kind of api endpoint we are fetching data from there we are getting a promise and then we are checking that when it's done when the data has been fetched we can then parse it to JSON format and go through this array of JSON objects and then basically put them to the web page so users can then see that and that, that, that here is the second URL second uh, fetch call to this and up API endpoint to get more data this is quite straightforward and simple to get external material to your web application as a conclusion, JSON and Ajax provide us a way to get data from external services or from our own server without the need of, of reloading the web page. This is very nice and widely used uh, way to get data from external services. And also if you are building a website that uses a front end and library like React, then everything is fetched from the back end. And data is also usually nowadays in JSON format that can be read by human eye, but also easily used programmatically. And this fetch API is the thing that you usually use. It's very easy to use and fast way to get data from any API endpoint that is providing you, for example, JSON or XML.